Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to summarize the data which I've been collecting in the previous videos. So for those who haven't seen those videos I just quickly summarize what happened uh, in those videos and why I created this video. So basically in my past uh, five uh, videos I was uh, measuring different uh, Peltier coolers. So they are different uh, devices from uh, 3 to 15 ampere uh, units and what I've been doing there is uh, I had this setup that you can see on the screen so I attached the hot side of the Peltier cooler on the uh, heatsink of this uh, CPU cooler and then the cold side was capsuled in this kind of uh, chamber and I monitored the temperature of the cold side uh, by a K-type thermocouple and then there was another thermocouple uh, on the back side of this uh, heatsink which was in contact with the hot side of the uh, Peltier device so that was essentially the measurement for the hot side temperature and then there was another thermocouple here uh, which was measuring the warm air which was exiting from the uh, CPU cooler. So I was measuring three different uh, temperatures but the most important is the cold side temperature. And then here you can see two multimeters. Uh, this one was measuring the voltage uh, on the uh, Peltier device and this was measuring the current running through the Peltier device. So here you can see what kind of data uh, I calculated or obtained. Uh, some of them are like directly measured and some of them are calculated from the measured uh, data. So I often uh, mention this IMAX 50% so to have some uh, comparable number I took all the Peltier devices and I set 50% uh, of uh, the current on the power supply so for example for the 8 ampere device I set the uh, current to 4 amperes and then I checked what was the minimum temperature. So that was one of the data. I will talk about this because I found some interesting thing. And then uh, I was often referring to some sort of curve which I was measuring by increasing the current and measuring the uh, cold side temperature. And uh, from that curve, which uh, you will see as well, uh, I could obtain the I min or sometimes I max and uh, T min values. And these will be very very important because most of the other values that you can see here are related to these two numbers. And then of course since it's a Peltier device then we have Peltier and Zeebeck effect so we can measure all these or uh, we can measure or obtain all these two values for it and then some sort of quality factor and then resistance uh, coefficient of the thermal conduction that will be interesting because uh, yeah, I will explain, uh, but uh, it will be interesting because we need to know what's the thermal conduction between the hot and uh, cold side of the Peltier. And then we have different, uh, let's say, heat uh, numbers or quantities. So we have the Peltier heat, which is the most important thing. And I think they put this number on the data sheet as the Q, uh, sorry, QC, like the cooling uh, power and then we have the joule heat that's our biggest enemy because the larger the current that you apply on the Peltier cooler the larger uh, the contribution of this effect and then the larger the contribution of this effect the lower you can get in the temperature because the joule effect, joule effect uh, is working against the Peltier effect so that's not so good for us and then we have uh, another problem that's uh, from the thermal conduction. So you have a hot side and you have a cold side and these are uh, in a solid connection because it's the same material, just one and the other corner of it. So there is definitely a heat conduction uh, between these two sides. And uh, of course the higher the temperature on the hot side the larger the problem is and then of course we have a problem with the 
uh, insulation or isolation from the environment. So there is another like heat source that is the heat basically entering the cold side uh, because of the lack of the insulation. So these are the numbers. So we will analyze these uh, numbers, all the data, and then we will have some conclusions. So first of all, how to measure this T-min and I-min. So what I did, uh, usually, uh, I started with the IMAX 50, so the 50% of the maximum current, which is uh, stated in the data sheet. And then this is the 15 ampere unit, so you can see it here. Uh, I started here, so this is 7.5 amperes. And what I did after that, I increased the current and so how the temperature develops on the uh, cold side of the uh, Peltier device. And then after reaching 14 amperes, I went uh, back one or uh, one and a half ampere below uh, IMAX 50, so from the starting point. And then I uh, measured a few other points. And uh, here you can see, maybe it is a bit confusing, but the temperature now it's defined in Kelvin. This is necessary because of the equation, uh, the nature of the equation that I'm going to fit on this, uh, it needs uh, to have the data in Kelvin. But uh, yeah, it's no big deal. Uh, one uh, remark about this curve, it uh, depends on the temperature of the hot side and uh, basically everything else, uh, but uh, the hot side temperature is a big uh, factor. So if you manage to get the colder uh, hot side, so you have better cooling than me, or you have worse cooling than me, like a very small uh, heat sink or something, then this curve gets shifted. So don't uh, be surprised if you get better or worse values. This uh, curve is uh, typical for my experimental setup. And then of course everything will be messed up uh, if you have different cooling because your current values will be different current readings and uh, voltage and everything else. But uh, within like let's say 10-20% uh, margin if you have the same or similar type of experiment you should have similar type of results. So I have these data points and then I fitted this curve this uh, on these uh, data points and uh, from this uh, fitting I got three parameters A, B and C and those three parameters are used in these equations that you can uh, see below and uh, by using these equations I could obtain T min and I min and we will use these in the next uh, steps for example getting the Peltier coefficient so I also measured the current and uh, the voltage during the measurements. So at each uh, reading where I measured the cold side temperature, I also read the voltage, the current and some other temperatures. So this is basically the plot of that. This is for a different unit. Uh, you can see in uh, six uh, steps, I measured these values. So what I did, uh, I fitted a linear on this and then using the slope, the A parameter, and uh, the Y intercept, B parameter, and the I min from the previous type of uh, evaluation, I could calculate the U min. And the U min is also the Peltier coefficient. So this is very good because we got a new value that we can use in the future. And I have to emphasize again that this is temperature dependent. So if you change the hot side temperature, i.e. you change your cooling, then you can get uh, somewhat different uh, values than me. So now we know the U min and the T0. T0 is the initial temperature. So uh, the temperature of the hot side without any cooling, basically, uh, or without any current running through the Peltier device, to be precise. And then uh, you just use this equation. There are two equations, and I tell you why. Because this is the U min, so if you use the PAB, so the Peltier coefficient from the U min, then uh, you can use this, but the PAB can be obtained from another type of measurement. So then you can substitute it there and you can get a more precise data. or you can measure the Z-back coefficient 
uh, directly and how you do that so you have the power supply connected to your uh, patio and then you cool down the cold side to roughly let's say minus 10 minus 15 degrees uh, celsius and uh, then you disconnect your power supply from the patio so the only thing that is uh, connected to your uh, patio device is now a voltmeter so you start to measure the voltage at uh, the moment when you disconnect uh, your power supply from the uh, patio device and at the same time you also start to measure the temperature of the cold side and you log this data uh, for quite a while while let's say until the cold side reaches nearly the room temperature or the temperature of your hot side because if your hot side is below room temperature then of course uh, you just go until that value and uh, when you have this set of values you will be able to uh, fit a uh, linear on these uh, on these values and the slope of the the data or the slope of the linear uh, that you fitted on the uh, uh, measurement data uh, will give you the Seebeck coefficient. And uh, how does this work or why does this work? I can easily tell you. So when you create a temperature gradient between the cold and the hot side of the Peltier cooler, so you use it basically in reversed mode, uh, then there will be a voltage created on the output of the Peltier device. So simply you just reverse its uh, working principle and instead of applying a voltage, on it and uh, cooling one side and warming the other side. Uh, in this case, uh, since you cooled it down previously, uh, one side is let's say minus 15 degrees and uh, the hot side is let's say at room temperature or 30 degrees, then there is a roughly 40 degrees difference between the two sides. And as long as they are not equal, there will be uh, a voltage on the output, and this is what you measure basically. So it's uh, quite a nice experiment. I haven't done this because it's time consuming, uh, but maybe I will do it in the future. So then quality factor, that is basically just some, uh, let's say, performance uh, related factor so you can see that uh, it's mainly related to the initial and the maximum cooling related uh, temperatures and this is uh, basically material dependent uh, number so it, it basically depends on what kind of uh, semiconductor is used in the Peltier device. Resistance uh, this is a bit tricky topic but uh, if uh, now we have the T min, I min, this is from the same experiment, uh, and then we have the SAB uh, calculated from uh, partly from these values, then we can get the, the resistance. But uh, we can also measure it uh, in another way, or get it in another way, I will show you later. And then we have the coefficient of uh, the thermal conduction. Uh, and then this is basically depending on the uh, Zeebeck coefficient, uh, the quality factor and the resistance. And what we want to have with the Peltier device is the following. So we want large Zeebeck coefficient, so there will be a good response for the applied uh, voltage or current. So a big temperature difference, for example, between the cold and hot side. We want bad thermal conductivity on the other hand because we don't want too much uh, heat transferred from the hot side towards the cold side because that will uh, decrease the efficiency of the cooling. And then we also want to have good electrical conductivity because uh, if it's a bad electrical conductor then at the same uh, current there will be higher joule heat uh, generated because the resistance drops. Uh, sorry, the resistance increases. Uh, so in, if it's a bad conductor, then it has high resistance. So I squared times R is the uh, joule heat. Uh, so the number for the joule heat, basically. So if the R value is high, then uh, it's a bad electrical conductor and you get higher joule heat. And if it's a good electrical conductivity, then you get less impact from the... Uh, 
Joule effect. And then we have this energy balance equation. I hope it is called like this. If not, please uh, correct me. I don't know all the English terms, but uh, I'm trying. But uh, what this usually, or no, what this says is that uh, we are in a, let's say, stationary uh, state. So the dq over dt is uh, zero. And uh, what this uh, energy balance equation contains is the following. So we have the uh, Peltier heat here, which is uh, dependent on the current and the Peltier coefficient, which is also dependent on the temperature. So again, as I mentioned, everything is uh, very temperature dependent. So if you have different cooling, different numbers will be in your calculations. And then we take half of the Joule heat here. Uh, why half? Because we are focusing on just one side, uh, on the cold side. And then we have another uh, term, which is the conduction related, heat conduction related heat. So that is when the heat goes from the hot side towards the cold side. And then this uh, minus uh, dq over dt is the loss from the environment. And you can see that only the Peltier has positive sign. So that's our uh, initial value that we rely on. And all these things are with minus uh, sign. So those are like working against the Peltier uh, heating or Peltier cooling, sorry. But this equation in this uh, form, it uh, says that there is basically no uh, heat transfer. So that's also very good for our uh, experiments because we more or less uh, said or assumed that uh, we don't have any kind of heat load or heat transfer. So uh, these numbers should be like quite close to the reality. So this is basically the first uh, measurement uh, result. So you can see that uh, these uh, points or dots are the real measured values. And then the fitted curve is this. And as you can see, the uh, TEC703 has uh, the maximum current of 3 amperes, but the curve continues to go down uh, after 3 amperes, and that's quite uh, surprising. So this has a higher I min value, or I max, here I refer to it I max, than its uh, nominal maximum current. And then this is just the voltage. So I, I just show you that uh, these are the two things which I measured basically, and all these things are uh, from those values. So I use the equations that I showed you previously, and then these are the results of those equations. And then uh, this is a bit more interesting. So for the uh, six ampere unit, we were able to go about the uh, I min or I max. So we were able to increase the current. So we increased the temperature of the cold side. And then we have the 8 ampere unit. And here also there are two points after the uh, minimum temperature or minimum cooling. And uh, then this is the 10 ampere unit, same. So we have this nice uh, valley and then it starts to go up uh, roughly around 7 amperes 6.82 and then this is our last unit the 15 ampere unit you can see that the minimum is around 10 amperes but then since there was a lot of difference between the maximum current 15 amperes and 10 amperes I kept continuing the increase of the current but uh, yeah it's just warming up the device but you can see that uh, this is still uh, minus 15 roughly that's uh, that's quite nice so first of all let's see this very uh, interesting uh, result so here what I did on the x-axis you can see it is uh, the current and on, on the y-axis I have inverted it so the temperature goes down if you go up on the y-axis and I have the five different uh, devices I can I, I think you can uh, guess which is which 
So you just multiply the uh, currents here by two and you get the currents for the devices. So this is the three ampere device and then the minimum temperature for the IMAX 50%. So for uh, 1.5 amperes, it's roughly 11 degrees minus. And then if we go to the larger device, uh, twice as large, uh, six ampere unit. So here we have three ampere applied to it. It's let's say minus 18 degrees. And then we go up by two amperes. So uh, eight amperes or four here. So 50% of the eight. Then we almost uh, reach the uh, minus 24 degrees. And then we go two amperes up again. And then we fall back almost to the same level as the two amperes before this. So you can see that here, uh, of course, the difference between these is just uh, one amperes when it comes to these values, but uh, the device's uh, maximum current uh, is two ampere in difference. So this is the eight ampere unit and this is the 10 ampere unit. So here I applied four amperes, here I applied five amperes. And you can see that this five ampere value almost uh, jumps back to the same level as the 6 ampere value or 3 ampere in the 50% terms. And then uh, there is a gap here and we have the 15 uh, ampere unit so 7.5 amperes are applied here and we can see that uh, the temperature just drops down. So it seems like that uh, there is a sweet spot here and uh, the 8 ampere unit behaves very nicely and uh, later on I will explain why. So here another maybe interesting uh, set of curves. Here I put the current percent and what I, uh, uh, what I mean is that I took the maximum current and I also took the applied current and I always divided the applied current with the maximum current of the device. So each case you can see that I divided by these numbers with the measurement values. So here for example uh, we know that uh, this was 4 amperes because this is 50% of the applied uh, current and then uh, here this was uh, five amperes and so on. But what I wanted to uh, do here is maybe it gives more sense to the curve to to the curves to not uh, compare them uh, with the real currents because then uh, they the minimums would be shifted from each other. But here we can see that what is the real capability of the devices like relatively to their maximum performance. And here we can see that again the 8 hamper device goes quite deeper than the others and also we can see that uh, the higher here with the higher minimum is the uh, 15 hamper device. So again we can see that uh, the 8 hamper device behaves uh, the best and we can also see that this purple curve goes above 100% so it is here somewhere 115 roughly where it has its minimum and uh, that is very interesting because uh, it is like overperforming its uh, specification. But uh, we can see that, for example, if we take the 8, 10, and 15, so green, red, and uh, black, then uh, these minimums are like going up, uh, and the minimums are almost at the same spot, so roughly around 60. Or roughly between 60-70 uh, percent. So what happens here is that uh, the Joule effect, uh, what I suspect that happens, that the Joule effect uh, kicks in more and more here. So then we get more and more uh, losses because of that and we cannot reach that called temperatures. So in these uh, charts you can see the different uh, types of powers or heats and uh, what you can see that, uh, for example, if we increase the uh, power of the unit or if we, you, if we choose a bigger unit, then uh, the Peltier uh, heat goes up 
and of course that's what we would expect and then also we can see that uh, the joule heat is the same as the heat transferred from the hot side uh, towards the cold side which is an interesting uh, thing but I can explain it why <coughs> and then uh, the last thing which is not uh, listed here is the DQ over DT not the capital DQ but the small uh, DQ that is the blue box and that is basically the heat uh, loss due to the environment so the heat which is seeping into the cold side from the environment due to the lack of uh, isolation and you can see that that is not a big uh, uh, contribution it's like 10 watts but still uh, it's there and it can be decreased so what I suspect that uh, these two numbers are the same is that they are derived from the same uh, experimental values and they are not uh, directly measured so they are sort of coupled uh, together and if I change uh, one parameter in my uh, numbers then uh, these will move more or less uh, together. So how to avoid this? Uh, we have to measure everything uh, where it is possible. So the PAB can be measured or got from another uh, so-called, I think it's like a Kelvin equation. And then also the SAB uh, can be measured directly. So we could use those values instead of uh, calculating them using, for example, the I min and the T min and uh, then these numbers would be more reliable but you can see still uh, for example i can believe this that the joule uh, heat is quite a crucial contribution and as you increase the uh, performance of the device so the and the current that you can run through them uh, the joule heat uh, is going up uh, the reason why it is not doubling be between for example 3 and 6 or 6 and uh, 15 uh, is because they are uh, not only different devices but they have a different resistance as well so you can sort of decrease the resistance uh, of these devices and that means that uh, you just start to eliminate this part or decrease this part in the equation so there will be less impact from the from the joule device uh, joule uh, effect sorry and i will show you that eventually these values are decreasing with the larger units so here you go uh, what i did here is i just uh, used the measured voltage and current and i uh, put the points down and then after that i just uh, sim simply uh, fitted a linear on all these uh, set of points and then that comes uh, uh, the slope of these uh, fittings will give us the, the resistance so that is in the middle column here and then the first column is uh, from the other equation that I showed you earlier so that's what we get from there and then on the right uh, most column you can see the values from the data sheets that I could find in the internet and you can see that these numbers are more or less the same or very close to each other of course uh, these values since they are temperature dependent it's very important to determine them at the same temperature where they uh, are described in the data sheet but still we can see that uh, these are quite close but uh, it's also visible that if you choose a different uh, evaluation method then your numbers can differ some uh, to some extent so it's very important to see this and also as i said the the larger the unit so if we go downwards the lower its resistance so this is also helping us to get rid of the joule heating but uh, it's it's not everything because we still increase the current and uh, in the previous slides equation the current was squared so it's a quadratic term while the resistance is linear so if you change the resistance uh, that will not have that big impact as you would change the current and then there is another interesting curve which might uh, push you towards the 
8 ampere unit again. So what I did, I just plotted the two uh, sides of the Peltier cooler against each other. And since I did not directly measure the temperature of the hot side, so I did not measure it in the same manner as I measured it in the cold side, where the thermocouple was directly touching the cold side, uh, the hot side was indirectly measured uh, by measuring the temperature of the other side of the heat sink, which was in contact with the uh, hot side of the Peltier unit. So this is maybe a little bit distorted or a little bit different, but uh, you can still see the main uh, things that I want you to see. So here again, uh, the 8 ampere units performs the best. So as you can see that uh, this drop here from actually from room temperature, but I started to measure from here, from room temperature uh, down to minus 25 degrees, you don't have too much difference from room temperature, which was usually 25 degrees. You, you don't uh, drop too much uh, or you don't increase too much. So you barely go up uh, four degrees. And if you check the 15 ampere unit, so let's say twice as much current, you don't drop that much. So like, uh, let's say uh, eight degrees away or seven degrees away from the uh, eight ampere unit, but then you increased uh, the hot side uh, temperature more significantly than here. And that is also another uh, demonstration of the Joule effect. So of course this is a higher uh, current unit. So the Joule effect will be more uh, remarkable in this case. So we have to keep this in mind. But th this does not mean that uh, it is not a good cooler. It just means that you cannot cool it to that uh, cold temperatures as you would be able to do it with other things. So maybe uh, the 15 ampere unit will cool down a bucket of water, let's say in two hours, and this will do it in uh, four hours, the eight ampere units, but uh, the bucket of water for the 15 amperes will be, let's say, minus 15 degrees, and for this uh, eight ampere unit, it will be minus 25 degrees. But then, of course, then you sacrifice a lot of time. So that's uh, also important. But you can see that uh, the 8 Ampere overperforms all, all the others. And, uh, and that we could already see that uh, at the 50% uh, IMAX evaluation. So that was the highest column uh, with that. And here it, it is also, it goes the lowest. So that's uh, very nice. And uh, just uh, as a final slide, I just want to tell a few sentences that uh, you should not think that the larger Peltier cooler uh, will result in colder uh, cold side temperatures because that's not the case. And why? Uh, it's very simple. The delta T is same, basically same for all these units. It is between 60 to 70 degrees. It depends on the hot side temperature, of course, but that's pretty much a fixed value and uh, the variables are more like the QC values. So basically the heat that you can as essentially use for cooling. And uh, that can change the things, but uh, it cannot bring you to a lower temperature. That's, that's very different. And still, I want to emphasize, uh, that's a, another misconception that Peltier coolers can be used for air conditioning. No, they cannot. And why? Because you, wait, uh, it cannot be used efficiently or it's not a viable solution. Yes, you can use, let's say 10 of these 15 ampere unit, and then maybe you can use them, uh, but then you will have a lot of problem dissipating the heat from the hot side. So it's not a viable solution to use Peltier coolers. They are not too efficient. Uh, they require a lot of current and then uh, it's just not easy to work with them uh, if you want to make them into air air conditioner. So just don't use them. 
it's uh, better for something which is in direct contact uh, with the with the particulars cold side so for example you put on some kind of container on the cold side and then you fill up uh, the container with some sort of liquid with your favorite tea or something and uh, then you let that uh, cool down but uh, air conditioning is a too big task for this so I hope uh, you like this uh, series I tried to highlight some interesting data that I measured and I will actually continue this kind of series and uh, what I will do I will try to compare the cooling performance of these devices in a more uh, sensible way so I will try to cool down the same amount of uh, water from the same temperature with all these devices using their IMAX 50 uh, value and also using their uh, I min so where they have the maximum cooling and uh, we will see what happens but that requires uh, quite a work because I had to I had to redesign the clamping uh, mechanism and I had to get some container install the insulation to that container and so on so that might take some time but uh, I'm working on it and uh, sooner or later I will start to release those videos so don't forget to subscribe so you will see those videos and I hope you learned something and it was somewhat useful uh, for you and see you in the next video.